Chairman Powell and many of the uh, um, uh, significant uh, banking personnel and economists say we're not in a recession. But let me just give you what the facts are in terms of the state of the economy. Number one, we have a record job market of uh, record unemployment of 3.6 percent today. We've created 9 million new jobs so far, just since we become president. Business are investing in America at record rates. That doesn't sound like a recession to me. President Biden reacting to yesterday's economic news that the United States economy shrank for the second quarter in a row. Let's bring in former Treasury official and Morning Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner. Steve, good morning. Good to see you. Before we dive into your charts, just your assessment as someone who's lived and worked in this stuff for his entire life about what two consecutive quarters of economic contraction means. There a lot of people using this as a technical definition of recession. Obviously, um, politicians want to use it as a blunt instrument. But is this economy in a recession or not? Almost certainly not, Willie. And we'll get into this uh, with some data in the charts. But this two quarters of negative GDP thing is a common layman's de definition. In the real world, what happens is a nonpartisan independent institution called the National Bureau of Economic Research comes in and decides when a recession begins and when it ends. It probably won't do so for a good while because it considers all the data, not just this two quarters thing, but as the president pointed out, what's going on in the jobs market, what's going on with consumers, what's going on with investment, all sorts of data. And then at the, and after all that is said and done, usually months, maybe even a year later, they come in and, and tell us whether we were in a recession or not. So it's a very technical issue. And this two quarters thing is just shorthand. All right, so let's take a look at the charts, and you begin with the U.S. economy uh, contracting again, but you take a little closer look at what that means. Sure. Uh, so first, let's just a uh, little bit of history. The, re uh, the solid red line is the how the GDP overall has been performing for the last 18 months. And as you can see, for the last year, in 2021, we had very significant growth. We actually had 5.7 percent growth. And as the president has also pointed out on many occasions, that is an exceptionally high rate of growth, obviously had to do with our coming out of the pandemic a bit. And then you can see the red line dip below zero, and those are our two quarters of negative growth. And all those colored bars are basically the different pieces of GDP. The things above the horizontal black line are things that added to GDP. The things below it are things that detracted. And you can see that the dec overall decline was small. And so this is almost as much stuff above the bar uh, the line as below it. And what's going on here are some technical factors that I'm going to spare you about inventories and foreign trade and so on. But the things to note uh, uh, is the turquoise line, which is how much services consumers are buying. This is the famous airline situation, hotels, doctors, lawyers, all that stuff has stayed substantially positive throughout this period. They are buying fewer goods at the moment. That's the dark blue line, a uh, dark blue uh, uh, square just below the line. But that's uh, that's fairly normal after what's gone on in the pandemic. I think the other important things to note are that um, housing has begun to uh, decline. You had a 14 percent decline in housing last quarter. And that's to be expected when you raise interest rates and, and mortgage rates, as you know, have doubled over the past several months. It has an effect on housing. The last thing I would note on this chart is the dotted red line to the right. That is the consensus projection of economists for what could happen uh, in the next two quarters, which is slightly positive GDP, i.e. Uh, not a contraction. I do think there is still a very substantial chance, probably more than 50 percent, that we have some kind of recession at some point to get inflation under control, but it is not where we are today. So as we move to your second chart, Steve, one of the points that people like Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen have been making is when talking about whether we're in a recession is if you look at the employment picture, that's just not an economy in a recession. We have 11 million open jobs, twice as many jobs as people looking for them. It just doesn't square with the argument that this is a recession. Do you do you agree with them on that? 
And this chart shows exactly what you just said. This goes back through every recession uh, from the mid-1950s on, with the exception of the pandemic, because unemployment went so much it was literally off this chart. And you can see that in every recession since 1957, you've had a material increase in unemployment. All those blue bars, uh, black bars going up is essentially the amount by which unemployment went up in percentage points, as you can see far over on the left. And then you look over on the right, and you see our little turquoise bar, which actually shows unemployment going down over the last two quarters, completely contrary to recession. And as you said, 3.6 percent unemployment rate, huge number of unfilled jobs. Just last month, we created 372,000 new jobs, 2.8 million new jobs this year. This is not a recession that uh, I've ever seen, and therefore I don't really think, uh, and nobody really thinks uh, this is actually a real recession. Now, on your last chart, the other side of this, what makes it feel, whether or not it's technically a recession or not, like one to a lot of people, is the cost of things. It's just too expensive to go out, and you're seeing that in consumer confidence. Yes. Uh, look, the economy is no doubt weakening, and that is part of the plan. We have to bring down this inflation. The only way known to man and economists is to reduce demand, uh, which does could eventually lead to some unemployment, but just get people to spend less. And inflation, unfortunately, has been taking that toll. So the chart on the left, this is, this is interesting numbers that just came out in the last day or two. Uh, we've seen a lot of consumer confidence numbers over the months. They're all pretty terrible, quite frankly. This particular index isn't even as bad as some of the other ones that are out there. But you can see that we've had a fairly steady decline in consumer confidence for several months. What makes this chart a bit new and interesting, perhaps, to the viewers is on the right, this chart actually, or this index, is based on five different sub-indices sub that are all then aggregated. And one of the things they do is break a question to consumers of how do you feel now, and this is particularly about the job market, and how do you think in the future? And what you can see on the red line is that at the moment, consumers, for obvious reasons, feel pretty darn good about the job market. They feel that there are plenty of jobs out there. But when you look at the blue line, they are very pessimistic about the future. And as we all know, elections are about the future. We are facing an election. This kind of a spread is not, is not great for Democrats going to the election. And we really obviously need to hope that jobs continue to come in strong and we get some kind of a reversal of that blue line, people's expectations about the future being quite negative at the moment. Steve, a couple of questions about the lived economy. What's going to happen to interest rates on car loans, credit cards, and where do you suppose all the workers are? Well, uh, on the first question, Mike, they're going to go up. Uh, we have to be realistic about what's going to be required to bring down 9.1 percent inflation. We had 75 basis points, three quarters of a percentage point in layman's terms increase this week. The market is expecting more increases before it finally tops out. Uh, mortgage rates have gone roughly from two and three quarters percent to five and a half percent for a 30 year mortgage. As I said, that has already had an effect on the housing market. You will see other interest rates follow suit. This is sort of economics 101. Higher interest rates mean people borrow less, which means they spend less. It's painful. It's not fun for anybody. But unfortunately, it's the price we pay for having been a little bit too exuberant with our stimulus, both from the Fed and from Washington, from the central government uh, over the course of the pandemic and during the recovery. And the question is, can we land this plane uh, safely without a recession? That would be very, that is not supported by history. History would tell you that we're not sophisticated enough to land the plane. It would be a bit like a civilian aircraft, airplane pilot like me trying to land on an aircraft carrier. It, you might get lucky, but more likely you're going to probably have a bit of an unpleasant experience. And I think we have to prepare ourselves for that possibility. Steve, I have faith in your piloting abilities. Um, totally. But let's, there's going to be more <laughs> legislation coming. Democrats believe they can get this reconciliation package. Anti-inflation is right in the name. Uh, but from what you know of it and what it aims to do, what sort of impact will it actually have? 
Well, first, the, the, this, the mansion schumer package, or whatever you'd like to call it, I think is an extraordinary achievement. I think to have, first of all, pulled it back from the jaws of defeat, but to produce a package that actually reduces the deficit in a meaningful way for the first time in 11 years, and therefore would presumably have some impact, positive impact on inflation, as well as getting corporate taxes partly sorted out, as well as the prescription drug, all that stuff is, is quite amazing. But we have to be realistic that these are all small things relative to the size of the inflation problem. Uh, there are other small things the president could do that so far he hasn't done relative to the size of the inflation problem, but they're small relative to the size of the inflation problem. We have a very significant inflation hole, if you will, but every little bit of digging out is helpful, and we should continue to try to dig ourselves out. Every little bit we can dig ourselves out by policies like these takes some pressure off the Fed, means interest rates don't have to go up quite as much, but I don't want to hold out false hope that you're going to suddenly see uh, a meaningful drop in inflation simply because they pass this reconciliation bill. Excellent explanation of everything going on right now, all the cross currents, and Steve's being humble. He actually was the technical coordinator on Top Gun Maverick uh, and wisely uh, cut himself in on the back end of that $1.2 billion film. Steve Ratner can drop a dime on an aircraft carrier any day of the week. Great to see you, Steve. Thanks so much.